everybody. Let me All right. So um, I'm here today to talk about Catello and Pulp 3, um, what it'll do for you and how you get there. Hello, uh, installation. Feel free to stop me anytime if you have any questions. Be to answer them as I go along. There will be a time at the end specifically for questions. So first, uh, you, you may or may not be familiar with Pulp 3. So let me just kind of talk about what it is. So Pulp 2 is the content management backend of a Catello installation. It provides the ability to create repositories, manage the content, and serve the content. And then Catello basically provides workflows on top of that. Pulp 3 is a complete rewrite of Pulp. Uh, don't necessarily think of Pulp 2 and Pulp 3 as a, you know, a, a minor upgrade. They are two completely different things. Pulp 3 is a rewrite. It has completely new concepts and terminology. Can't really use any knowledge about Pulp 2 and apply that to Pulp 3. Is you could it, they could have renamed it something else entirely, but uh, they you know they went with a, a, a major version bump is perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, but I just want to emphasize that it is a completely different beast. It focuses only on content management, and so it drops all, all other features not related to that, such as the agent-based updating, which we use for Catello Agent. It drops errata applicability calculations. Um, I think of other major things that it drops, but those are the two big ones. It's currently only uh, only has an API for accessing it. There's no CLI or UI. There is a desire to make make a, a CLI in the future, but right now it is API only. It is a lot easier in Pulp 3 to write plugins and add new content types, and their goal is their hope is that there will be a community around it to write lots of plugins for lots of different things. And from what I've seen, it, 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 from my experience, it also seems easier. I feel like they can um, develop features and add content types a lot in a lot more simpler way and, and less time than in, under Pulp 2. It also uses Postgres, not Mongo. So a Catello installation with Pulp 3 uh, only is standardized on a single database, which is a, a big win. It also uses Redis for task management, not Cupid. And in, in our experience, Redis is a lot more lightweight. It is There's a lot more projects out there using it, so there's a lot more knowledge around it. So why move to Pulp 3? Well, the big one is Pulp 2 is end of life. I believe they're on the current last uh, Y stream of Pulp 2. There may end up being another one, but um, the support is dwindling. Pulp 2 is on Python 2. Pulp 3 is on Python 3. So, you know, as, as technology or as time moves forward, the ability to support Python 2 is diminished. Nearly all the development resources have moved on to Pulp 3. So getting bug fixes is harder on Pulp 2. Features is impossible right now on Pulp 2, pretty much. Um, fa faster syncing. So here's some timings I took, and it's not the scale, so it's just meant to be represent representative. Uh, the little green boxes are the times that Pulp Two and three did the did it syncing. The orange boxes are the time it spent uh, generating the the YUM metadata. So you see on the CentOS seven between Pulp two and Pulp three, there was actually seventy percent improvement, which is great. What this does highlight is that the teleprocessing that happens after the sync is now a huge chunk of it. It's the vast majority of the time. So we have we have um, an issue to, to work on there. 
because I think there's some low hanging fruit we can do to speed that up. And Apple 7 saw a similar 70% um, improvement. So the, the time is about a third of what it was before for just the pulp pieces. And that really opens up some um, opportunities for us to improve on the Cotello side as well. We look forward to that in the future. Publishing a content view. Uh, if you're publishing without any filters, there's a 94% improvement. And the reason for that is that we have a lot less to do in Pulp 3, um, especially when you're not actually curating the content, you're just taking simple snapshots. So it's hugely, uh, a huge improvement there. Even with filters, there's about 50% improvement. So they, they've really been able to optimize the workflows that we care about. And they, the, I would say Pulp 3 has kind of been designed with some of those workflows in mind. Especially, uh, as you see there, the, without filters. No more Mongo. Um, during the tests above, there uh, we had about um, one gigabyte of memory used. And uh, the Postgres on the Pulp 3 only really used about 75 megabytes for Pulp 4. So when, when all is said and done, we should have lower system requirements. Potentially, it'd be, it'd be nice since Catello is a, is a large thing. Um, I didn't mention it here, but in the past, I've also seen really large space usage by Mongo just do the structure of the data and it's kind of the duplication of fields and things. I've, I've seen 150 gig Mongo databases and I've never seen that with, with Postgres, um, with, with Pulp3 or with Gatello or with Foreman. I mean, that, that would be a very, very large Postgres database. So how, how do you get to Pulp3? Uh, so we have instructions on our upgrade page, and I just want to know 316 is still in RC phase, so it's not released yet. Getting a little feedback from somebody. All right. So if you're on Catella 315, you already have Pulp 3 installed, but it's not being used for uh, anything unless you've gone through the migration process that you see on the, the Tele 315 upgrade page. You don't have to do it now. You can give it a try. Let us know how it goes. Um, that process will migrate file and Docker content from Pulp 2 to Pulp 3. So you'll, you'll already be getting some of the benefits depending on the features you're using Pulp 3 if you do that. But uh, the big migration is when you upgrade to Catello 316. Uh, if, you, if, if you haven't done anything, uh, when you upgrade to 316, you'll, you'll have Pulp 3, you'll have Pulp 2 installed. Everything will still be in Pulp 2. You can run a content migration step, and that, that can take uh, a very long time. It can take potentially even days, depending on how much content. But that can be run online. So your, your forming Catello can be running, Visioning hosts, serving content, all that stuff, um, seeking new content. And your content migration can be running. You can rerun it as many times as you want. When you're ready, there's a content switchover process. And that does one last migration. And then it reconfigures uh, the installation to start serving that content from Pulp 3. So you can see after this content switch over, yum file and Docker is being served under Pulp 3, Puppet, Ostry, and Dev is being served under Pulp 2. And we are, we are uh, Atex is mostly working on getting Debian under Pulp 3. So uh, that will be there in the future as well. And then <clears throat> once you upgrade to Taylor 4.0, Pulp 3 is used for all the content types. As we've discussed in the past, Puppet and OS tree content will be removed. Uh, and then upon upgrade, Pulp 2 will be shut down, removed in some manner. And then 
Ja, das hat bei der Schwierigkeit ja auch wieder wieder. So yeah, this is just a summer, summary of the content migration and the switchover. And then just some other general things to know, because there are a lot of differences between running pulp uh, two and pulp three. If you ever see the name pulp core, you, in your mind, you can just kind of think of pulp core as pulp three. Pulp core is sort of the core component, the core piece of pulp three, and it's named pulp core just so that in the future, if there's a pulp four, that can stay the same. And it's also different than pulp two, so it, to not confuse the two. Uh, there's a whole slew of new services. There's an API service that man manages API requests. There's worker services. A resource manager that um, sort of orchestrates the work to the workers, a content app that actually serves all the content, and then a Redis service, which on a default install, we're currently using the uh, SCL for Redis 5. That could change in the future. And then once Pulp 2 is removed, and that's when you would upgrade to Keteller 4.0. Uh, all these services would go away. The, the Pulp2 Resource Manager, Worker, Seller, Reach, Streamer, also Cupid D and QD Router D would all go away. Oh, and I didn't actually list here, but Mongo D would as well. In Pulp3, uh, or sorry, let me step back a second. In Pulp2, repositories were, were all stored in Varlib Pulp Published as a directory of sim links and you would have weird looking directories with a ton of sim links and two rpms and then the published metadata and then you'd have other sim links pointing to those so in a large installation you could have millions and millions of sim links and this was just too much managing all of that especially if you had any sort of higher latency file system, or I would say medium latency file system, trying to do operations on that came really slow. So sure, they were small, but there were millions and millions of them potentially. In Pulp3, repositories are no longer stored that way. They're only served through a running application, which is the content app. So, you can't necessarily look on the file system as much to, to gain understanding about uh, what's there. You have to browse the content. We can now serve repositories over HTTPS without SSL protection. So um, on 3.16, if you do a fresh install, you'll get pulp three and you can um, sync down a YUM repo and it will, you can browse it over SSL or access it over, uh, or HD, over HTTPS without any special certs. So that was always, that's been a pain historically. And Pulp3 gives us the control to be able to do that on a per repo basis. Content is still so stored in Varlo Pulp. Uh, stored in Varlo Pulp artifacts. And during the migration process, hard links are used on the file system. Uh, so the, <coughs> the, this space usage is not doubled. Uh, when you're migrating an RP a content from Pulp 2 to Pulp 3, it doesn't do a full copy of that RPM. It just does a hard link so that later in the future we can delete the Pulp 2 location and not affect the Pulp 3 location. Similarly to Pulp 2, the logging goes to journal CTL. So you can monitor for errors there or status there of the various services. And another big difference to note is that the upstream pulp community only provides builds via PyPy through the, the native Python builds. They do not provide built RPMs. So the Foreman and Catella community has kind of decided that for our community we tend to prefer RPMs and so we are maintaining those and building those uh, for our community. 
not uh, necessarily general purpose builds, but for our community. That also allows us to backport fixes if we need to, small things that maybe are on an older release. And that's really all I had. Are there any questions? Um, I have one question. And the question we have, since we're working on the pub three or pub deb for pub Debian, is how exactly right now are you deciding when to move to a new pulp core version? So I think in the Catello that everyone's working on right now, I guess would be the 316 that has both in it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what pulp core version is currently in there, but I guess we need to uh, sync our releases to make sure we're releasing for that version of pulp core in the pulp Debian plugin so that we can work on integrating it. Um, we tend, or 3.16 is right now shipping with, or going to ship with 3.4. Um, and we, we try to just update to the latest whenever it's available in master nightly, and then that gets in, you know, when a release happens, that version gets used. So we should be updating to 3.5 and nightly soon, um, which will go out with the next version. And I guess one follow-up question is if if we're going to work on sort of getting the Debian plugin ready and there's this pegged or there's the Catello 3.16, which is the one that has both part 2 and part 3 in it, then even if the uh, master or devil or whatever it is, or nightly you're using for nightly is already using a newer version. We kind of also need to always build for the uh, 316 release branch version because that's that's where we need to get it in for people to be able to migrate, I guess. Yeah, and it's definitely helpful if the um, if the plugin for the pulp core is as flexible as possible about what pulp core version you use. So if your plugin can run against 3.4 and 3.5 and 3.6, that gives a lot of flexibility to the process. That's not always possible. Um, and we have to kind of coordinate things a lot better or a lot more yeah, a lot better uh, if that is not possible. So that, I think we we do need to chat more about the Debian process um, and how that upgrade is going to work. Yeah, uh, we we do have the possibility of maybe it being in the 4.0 release um, if we can't get it into 3.16 and just have the upgrade happen or the migration happen for Debian only as part of that 4.0 upgrade. That's a possibility. But I'd definitely like to chat with you more about that. Hey guys, it's Tania from Pulp. Um, Karen, I just wanted to mention that um, when you and Justin discuss anything about the migration part, it's very important for us to know uh, the versions because it will really and direct how we release the migration plugin. Um, so please coordinate it with us as well. Um, there was a question in chat about uh, what do you mean by HTTPS without SSL? And Stephen answered it, and that's correct. Um, in with Pult two. Any repo that was you accessed over HTTPS had SSL cert authentication. So you had to present a client cert, and these were very special certs that only Candlepin could generate. Um, it didn't allow us to turn that on and off per repo. We need them on for Red Hat repos for um, subscription and time-related purposes, but which was unfortunate because it meant for every other repo we had to 
also turn the SSL authentication on, but now we have the ability to turn it off. So uh, in three or with Pulp three, there's a there's a setting, or actually previously there's a setting that allows you to turn on and off HTTP. And what it that setting does now is it allows you to turn on and off SSL cert authentication. So you'll always have HTTPS and you'll always have HTTP. It's just whether the SSL cert auth is required or not. And if it's required, HTTP won't work. Um, only the HTTPS content, or the content will only be available over HTTPS. Um, Christian asked, the background download policy will be deprecated. Is there a replacement for it? Um, so background, the background download policy was very similar to an immediate download policy. And let me summarize real quick for those that aren't familiar. Uh, on, a, on repositories, when syncing, there's a setting that controls if the RPMs are actually downloaded or not. So an immediate is what you think of as a normal sync. It would download all the metadata and then download all the RPMs. So if there were 10,000 RPMs, your Catello Pulp server would download all 10,000 RPMs and store them locally. What background does is it downloads all the metadata and processes that, and so then the sync is done. And then in the background, it's actually going and fetching the, the actual RPM. So you can continue to operate as if the repo is fully synced, and it eventually will be, but um, it's sort of delayed. There's not a direct replacement for that. That was seen kind of as the least useful download policy. What you could do is just do an um, on-demand sync and then switch it to immediate and then do that. Um, but I, I would imagine that the if you, if the download policy, if the background policy is really important to you, the Pulp team would be interested in hearing your use cases and uh, you know why the other download policies aren't as useful to you. There, Pulp three also provides a new download policy that Catello is not exposed yet, which we hopefully will once Pulp two goes away, and that is a proxy policy. So you could have a smart proxy out there that maybe doesn't have a lot of storage, but you want all the networking to be routed through it. So then it can just proxy the content from the main server and not actually store it. So that might be something to look forward to in the future. I have a question regarding errata calculation. How is that done in uh, um, Pulp 3 and Catello? Sure. Um, so, yeah, in Pulp 2, the a client would check in and it would upload with this package profile, and we would upload that to Pulp. We would upload its enabled repositories. We would upload that to Pulp. We would trigger a task in Pulp that would get calculated, and then we had to go pull all that data out of Pulp into Catello to be able to be easily searchable and, and um, Counts to be easily displayed. So now that Pulp 3 is not providing that, um, we're actually doing that in Catello. So it's being calculated in the database, um, and it. I think I think in the end, hopefully, we will have better throughput for those calculations because there's a lot less just dumb work that we have to do to push data and pull data. Um, it's it's just all being done in Catello. That sounds also, similar to the Arata calculation in Debian. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think initially we had been hesitant to to do that, but then the, and originally the Pulp three team was planning on doing Arata calculations for RPMs, and as we went down that path of them trying to come up with something that was really flexible. We just said, guys, maybe this doesn't make any sense. Maybe we should just That's kind of how we arrived at it. Uh, 
have another question regarding um, the Catello agent. So a lot of users are normally using the Catello agent, the good old Catello agent, which is connected via Cupid um, to Catello. So um, that will no longer be used in Pulp 3. Um, is there a, another way instead of using formal remote execution or another plan to, to have something similar? Um, right now, no. Um, remote execution has been around for a really, really long time, and it, it's a lot more flexible. Um, we, we don't have a current plan to provide an alternative. I think that there are things out there that are better and do a super popular. We could, it would be great to integrate with it. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, Justin, how about the transition from ELS 7 to EL8 as part of the process? For part two to part three, since I assume part two isn't going to be packaged for year late. Um, that's correct. It is not going to be packaged for year late, as far as I, I understand. Um, I, I would. I mean, I guess it depends on which release you're talking about. Um, it's for four point If you're at that point, I would imagine you would you would be Upgraded to just having Pulp 3 installed, and then you would kind of do a backup and restore to the uh, EL8 server. We do have a lot of possibilities of doing like an HA setup. You, that, you know, that's that's a possibility of doing a migration from an EL7 to an EL8. You just do an, an HA setup with a clustered Postgres, um, and then you could bring down the L7 server when you're, when you're done. That's not something that's necessarily been talked about a lot or documented, uh, but I think it's kind of compelling when we get to that point. But I, I would imagine you would not be able to migrate until uh, you are off of Pulp 2. Good, then uh, thank you very much that you had that great talk.